communion, I actually just felt on my heart that like I wanted to actually just speak on what the communion actually is and why it's so important and why like we actually can't we can't take it in an unholy manner. And I know like I, I, I usually get burdened with like we, we take communion at the end of service and it's so quick and no one really speaks on like the importance of what we're actually doing. And I just felt in like, like in my heart that the Lord wanted me to speak on communion, but yeah. So Father, we thank you for the service. We thank you for what you're doing, and we thank you for your spirit. Yeah, so let's start. <laughs> let's start. Before I even get into the word, I just want to go through the story of Christ before I go in. And I remember I, I, I went to church this Friday, and I started to feel... I started to feel this overwhelming sensation of that, like, my, my Jesus died. That my Jesus actually went in, into the grave and he silenced everything. And I, I started to realize that, like, sometimes I take that, that story lightly. And I was walking around my church. I was, I was pacing back and forth. And I started to remember what scripture said. That, like, it wasn't that, that they, they punished him, but he gave himself on to death. That he actually said that, like, you have no authority over me, but I give myself on to them so I may have sons and daughters. And I started to realize that, like, like you, the earth swallowed him but couldn't contain, contain him. That he had so much life in it that it had to spit him out. And when he got spit out, he came with, a, like he came with a, an army of captives risen again. And he knew that there were sons and daughters. And when I started to realize that love, when I started to realize that, that when he died on the third day, when he said it was finished, it was this, it was this thing. And I, I forget in, in what account of the Gospels it says, it said it was finished and people from the dead started to rise. Like people from the dead started to rise. Amen. Because he said this one word, it is finished. And it echoed throughout the whole spirit realm. Heaven and earth met one. It meant in one man called Jesus, and when he said, it is finished, everything that the Father was speaking from, from the Garden of Eden book to the book of Revelations came to pass in that one word. Sons and daughters now had access to the throne of God. And then on the second day, it was silent, and on the third day, he rose again. And he literally rose again, not for his own sake. He rose for our sake, for the sake of Son. And this week I was reading in, in John 6, it said that, that Jesus, he performed this amazing miracle. He fed the 5,000. And when I started to read it, I was like, oh, wow, like, you know, God, you performed this miracle. You know, I don't see you do that today, but, you know, I'm believing for it. And I, there was an account when Jesus said in John 6, he said, I am the bread of life. And I was like, whoa, that's a, that's a, that's a crazy claim, you know. And I know God's, like, he's not telling us to be to eat his actual flesh we're not cannibals you know but and he just said this thing in john 6 he said that i am the bread of life and he said eat of my flesh and drink of my blood so you may have eternal life and i started to realize why why was he why was he saying that why was he telling these people to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood and i started to realize that for the context of that chapter he just performed this miracle and then they, 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 they searched for him and they met him. And they said, if you are the son of God, if you are actually who you say you are, show us a sign. And then they were like, they, then, and they said, like provide for us, like give us food. And then the Lord replied to them in all of his wisdom and said, I am the food that you're longing for. I am the blood that you must drink. I am the one who will give you eternal life. And they didn't understand because they said, didn't my fathers, like the fathers in and in, in, um, our ancestors in the time of, of Moses, they had manna fall from the ground. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said they had manna, but they perished. They died. Mm -hmm. They ate of this manna, but it wasn't eternal. And he said, but if you eat of me, if you eat of me. And, and I started to really dwell on it and ask the Lord, what do you mean? And it was in the context of covenant. Mm -hmm. He said, if you, if you actually submit yourself under this covenant, I will have eternal life. You will have eternal life. That this covenant is not cheap. It's not just like a, a, a thing that we just, we, we just come to church to and say, yeah, like I'm, I'm a Christian. No, like this, we, this, this covenant cost his body. It cost his body. 
I don't, I don't know a man that would ever die for me. I don't even, I don't know a man who would do that for me. I know my mom loves me, but I don't, she has, she, she still has like a, an, an extent of how much her love can go to. My friends still have a, a, like a, a, a place where they can't go to, but the Savior said, I, I will give you my body. I will give you my body, and if you, if you eat of my bread, if you eat of my bread, if you submit yourself under this covenant, you will have eternal life. And I started to, to think about the book of Hebrews when it talked about like the high priest. When it talked about that, that before there was high priests that entered into the holies of holies, but the sacrifice was not eternal. That they had to keep on every single year, get a new sacrifice. They had to get a new lamb. And if the high priest was not up to par, the sacrifices for all of Israel could not be made. But then we have this high priest who said, I will lay down my blood. And this is why he says, drink of my blood, because that blood that he shed is the covenant seal. It's the covenant seal of what we have today. That if we didn't have that blood, if we didn't have that blood, we wouldn't have covenant. So I just want to go to John 6. Sorry if I'm really excited. I just love the gospel. I just love the gospel. And I, 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 I love it. Just, yeah. In John 6, in John 6, verse 41, it says, Therefore the Jews were grumbling about him because he said, I am the bread of life. And I came down out of heaven, and they were saying, it is, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he know? How, how does he now say, I have come down out of heaven? Jesus answered and said to them, do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will rise him up on the last day. When I read this verse, it was so it was so it was also so interesting because we so when we celebrate the communion, it's like we're celebrating like the, the Passover meal. And I know we're not the Israelites, we don't have to do it verbatim, but it's when you look back in the book of Exodus, you see the foreshadowing of what Christ was going to do and how they, they, they slaughtered the lamb, they put a blood on their, bo- their, on their doorstep or their, their doorpost, and, and they were led out of, they were literally led out of, 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 of slavery into a, a, a land for freedom. And I started to think that, that they, couldn't do them, they couldn't do that themselves, that God had to meet a man named Moses to lead them out of captivity so they can get into the promised land. And we know that they, they, they fell and they did many stuff. But I started to realize that when we take communion, it's like we are actually partaking in this Passover that we have actually been separated from the kingdom of darkness. And we have actually now entered into the exodus of being pulled out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And this is why Paul said, and in in, 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 I think it's in the book of Corinthians, he says that, that you, you guys are taking the communion in an unworthy manner. And he says, this is why many of you are, are asleep among you. And that word, when he said asleep, he means dead. They were, they, were, they were taking the communion in a way that literally caused people in their church to die. Because when we break this body in an unworthy manner, it's like we're spitting on the cross. It's like, it's like the, what he did does not matter. We can't just, just enter in and, and take the bread and rip it away and just say our sins are forgiven. When, when, when we actually take the communion, we have to make sure that we're right with God. We have to make sure that we're actually observing his commands. We have to make sure that we're laying ourselves at his feet and we're doing everything that he says in this holy book. And when God said, I am the bread of life, he, he didn't mean it in a, in, a, in a metaphorical way. He meant it as truth. That if you eat of what I say, if you do what I say, I will give you my life. I will give you everything that I said that I am into your being. And I started to think about more about the Passover and how, how, how the instructions of what he did. And how slow the process, but fast it was. It was just in the midst of the night where they did it. They slaughtered the lamb and they, they couldn't eat. They, they couldn't have any leftovers. So they, 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 they ate well and they, they just bring everyone into the community to eat this Passover. And then they were let out. And I started to thank God. Like I just started to thank God that you led me out of sin. 
I started to thank God that it took him 33 years to be prepared as a suffering, like a, a, a lamb, like a supper, like a supper for us. Because when I, when I start to think about this, this, this communion, I started to think about what, what it says in Revelation, how God is preparing a marriage supper for the bride. And I started to think that communion goes two ways. Communion goes to the way of we're actually understanding the body being broken on the, th of, of the body being broken of, of Jesus and the wine being spilled. And it, it also goes to the spiritual realm where when we take communion, we're not just doing it for, for our earthly sake. We're actually doing it for there's something set before us, which is the marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage supper of the Lamb is actually set before every believer where it says that you are the bride of Christ. And every time we partake of this communion, every time we break up this blood and, and break up this bread and drink up this blood, we, we have to remember we are his bride. We must remember we're his bride. This is why he died. He died for sons and daughters, but he also died for a church that he called his own. And when we break this body, when we, when we, when we actually take time and realize what we're doing, we must remember that we're his and his alone. We're his and his alone. I hope this is all making sense. I, I, I'm talking fast. But it's, it's just so holy to me. I just feel like we've been spitting on the act of communion. I, this is just my heart. I just feel like we've been taking it so fast. I feel like we've been taking it in, in a way that we're not understanding the, the actual weight, the magnitude of, of what Scripture says about it. It's so much in there from the Passover to what he said on the Last Supper when he said, I will not drink of this wine until the day. Like he said, I will not drink of this wine until we meet again in, in, in heaven. And when I started to think about this this morning, I, I, it went back to the marriage supper of the Lamb, that he's actually calling a bride to be whole and perfect, that he's calling us to stay at his feet. He's calling us to lay down every other lover, every other lover to satisfy his own heart. And we, we can't. We can't act like communion is only the, the little crackers and, and the grape juice that we drink. That's not what communion is. Communion is a lifestyle. It is actually a laid down life to the Lamb. When I was reading 1 Peter and I was reading 1 John, when it says that if you love me, keep my commands, and those who do not keep my commands do not actually love me, I started to think about communion. Because when, when, when the Lord broke it in the Last Supper, he, he did it to the 12 apostles knowing that at least 11 of them, because we already know Judas would betray him, but at least 11 of them would actually go out and change the world for his name. That when they actually started to partake of his ways, when they started to partake of his life, they didn't have an option to look back. They said, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. This is what I'm going to lay my life down for. And when they did it, they, they lived a lifestyle of what Christ said, of what Christ did, of what Christ acted on. Thank you, God. I just want to really touch on like the bridal part of, of communion. That like, I, I, I don't know how to say this like, correctly. I don't want to like step on toes, but but communion is, is, is not meant for the, for the non-believer. Communion is actually something that is given to the body of Christ. It's given to the bride of, of, of Christ, and it's actually a gift from heaven. It's a gift that, that, that came from heaven, that, that we don't have manna anymore. We don't see flakes of coming down from the sky that we can eat, but we know that we can partake in communion daily. It says, do this as much as you remember. Do this as much as you remember. Do this as much as you remember. Every time that you remember what the Savior has done, it should draw you closer to actually partake of his bread. That you not laying down your life is, is, not, is not acceptable before, it's not yet acceptable to the Lord if you want to take the communion. But you actually have to resolve in your heart that I will lay down every other lover, that I'll lay down every other life that I have, every idol, every job, every everything that I might think that I, that's bigger than the Lord down before you even partake in communion. This is a holy thing that that it, that will be done in the in the age to come. 
this will be a holy thing that will be done in the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I just, I just want to prepare our hearts before we even take communion, before Maddie comes on and actually like, like we pant on to the Lord, before we do anything, before we, we move and, and do anything. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like, yeah, I, I just feel like the Lord wants to meet hearts this, this afternoon, that like, that like if you feel like you're not loved, if you feel like you, you don't know who you are, if you feel like you, you're in this mess, like we, we have to get right with the Lord before we take this communion. Because the, this, this communion is actually the, the, one, of the biggest, the, the, one of the biggest things that a Christian can do to know that they're loved. The Son of Man died for you. And he rose again for you. And I, I don't want to take this in an unworthy manner. And I, I know that I'm repeating and I'm repeating, but I just, I, I, I just feel this in my heart that I don't want us to start taking this as a community in an unworthy manner. That he's truly the bread of life. That he's truly the way and the truth and the life. Like he is the only one that can satisfy. He's the only one that is coming back. He's the only one that could actually shape us to be the bride of Christ. He's the only one. He's literally the only, the only one. He's the only one. He's the only one that can cleanse the bride. And we celebrate this day and we, we call it the resurrecting, the resurrection, the resurrected Sunday when he rose. But I just want to, I, I also want to just like speak on that, that like it that's also not a metaphor either. Like all through scriptures, it says that the kingdom of darkness, like Jesus came to destroy the kingdom of darkness. That he came to destroy the works of the devil. It says that he's actually seated above every principality, demon, and ruler of this age. That he's seated above every religion. He's actually seated above every, every false god because he's the king of kings. And when he rose, like he he rose with us in mind. And when he suffered, he suffered with us in mind. And I, and I start to think about the story of, of, of Mary, of how she, she walked into that, she walked into the, the, Lord's, into the Lord's meeting and broke, up, broke open a, 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 a jar of oil and anointed him from burial. And I started to really think about it like deeply. And I, I started to realize that when Christ was getting whipped, the smell of the oil was still there. When they spat on him and they, they tore off his clothes, the, the scent of that oil was still on his feet. And maybe like the scent of blood was, was so overwhelming, but I started to just to envision that like maybe, just maybe, that, that scent of oil touched his nose. And he started to see what, what he was dying for. Because the scripture says that there was actually glory set before him. There was actually like the glory of God set before him. It was us. He saw that glory. It was us. And I started to think about like maybe with that smell, what Mary broke out, what she broke on his feet, maybe that smell touched his nose on the cross. Maybe when they were breaking him and bruising him and destroying him and spitting on his face and calling him a blasphemer, maybe that smell on his feet that was broken over from an undone life touched his nose. So I, I, I started to get undone by the Lord because I said, God, what can I offer you? What can I give to you? What can I, what can I do to break open my life? What can I do to break open my life so I may be worthy? What, so I may be worthy to partake of what you've given me. Because Mary knew this one fact, that he was actually the Lord. We were reading this at church about the, the Lazarus and, and how, he, how he rose, but but it made me realize that Mary knew that he was actually the Lord. She knew that he was the one who was going to come and is going to come because he's coming back. He's coming back to bring us into a supper, a supper that no other God can give us. No other God, no rock, no Buddha, no other God can give us this supper because no other God in, in, in the history of man came who ascended and descended formed into a, a body of a man hung on a cross and died there's no other God that would do that for you there's no other God that will do that for you and there's no other God coming to do that for you there's one God 
His name is Jesus. And we have the honor and the privilege, one, to stay at his feet, and two, to partake of his body. To partake of this body, and I, I just, this, this covenant is not light. I feel like, it, as, and, and I know our, our community talks about this, but I just feel like that in this age, we take this covenant with the Lord so loosely that there's no honor to it, that there's actually, there, there's no reverence for it, like what he actually said and done. When he says that you, you should not be committing adultery, we kind of just throw that away like it is what it is, or we shouldn't be lying, or we should honor our mother and father, what the scriptures talk about, like we throw it loosely, but this, 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 this is our lifeline. And if we're not obeying this, I am, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but we're not worthy to take communion. If we're not obeying the scriptures, the holy teachings of God, why do you think that you can break up his body and eat from it? The promises of God, the, 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 the literal covenant of God is only made with those who know their sons and daughters. And the thing, the thing that we've been preaching in Christianity is that it's not exclusive, but it is. It is. It's not, it's not for the whole world. It's not for everyone who just claims to be a Christian. It's actually only for those who know him. This covenant, this, this love, this communion, this, this partaking of washing of your sins, which is the blood, and eating of his body, which is your covenant, is only for those who know their sons and daughters. That, that's, that, that's what scripture teaches, and I don't want to go away from that. And I feel in my heart that we've been going away from that. We haven't been honoring the Lord that we, we come on Easter and we, we have parades, and I, I love the church, but, but Easter shouldn't be the only day where we give him all of our praise. It shouldn't. It should not. A whole God, a whole God came. He came, and he forsaked his, his divine nature for us. And he, he was conceived in in a baby, a God had to learn how to walk for you. As a baby, a God had to learn how to walk for you. And he cried as a baby for you. He went through puberty for you. Like, you know, like he went through all of these things. And I, I want to just to get your attention that like communion is, is, is way, it's, it's, I can go way deeper, but I, I just feel like, I just want to, I just feel like, the heart, your heart just has to get past that communion is, is a ritual. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of obedience onto the Lamb. That if we read these holy scriptures and we don't actually do them, and we actually don't keep his commands, why? Why would God in his holiness, in his, in his righteousness, say that you're worthy of my promises? He had literally one thing he said over and over and over again through every single scripture. He just says, follow what I'm saying. That I have a better way. I have a better covenant. I have a better promise. I have a better life from you. So why would he do all of these things for you if you're not actually serving him? If you're not actually taking what he's saying to be true? And I know we're small in this room, but like I just, I, I, I just want to present to you that idea that communion is actually a lifestyle to the Lord. That communion is, 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 not, is not just a ritual. It was a man's life, and his name was Jesus. And then when we actually do the communion today, like we, we need to remember the cross. We need to remember what the cross actually did that we say that it is finished, but we actually have to meet it in heart. That every, every, every cycle of sin, every sin nature, every depression, every anxiety, every sickness, every, everything that you can read off the line was destroyed by the cross of Calvary. This is what we're partaking in. This is what we're drinking of. This is what we're actually giving our lives to. So... Yeah, that's, that's pretty much all that I had. <laughs>